Well, welcome back to Dean's Space. Yep, it's me again, Dean, from Dean's Space, the place I spend a lot of my time. Anyway, tonight I'm going to try something a little different. We're going to make chicken pot pie. Okay, the difference between what I would normally be doing and what I'm doing tonight is that tonight I'm working on one leg. Had surgery done on my foot for a problem, and they've taken me as no pressure on the foot for up to three months. Uh, I'm not one to give up easily. So, if you see me panting, and that's because my foot hurts. But anyway, so far the Lord has blessed me with not having a whole, whole lot of pain. And so tonight we're going to cook some chicken pot pie for supper. It's about 4 o'clock and I need to have this done by about 6. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break, we're going to make the crust. And we're only using three ingredients, okay? We're going to use two cups of, of all-purpose flour. We're going to use about two-thirds of a cup of unsalted ice-cold butter. And then we're going to use ice, ice, ice cold water until we get our dough where we want it. Then we're going to fatten it out and we're going to put it in a regular pan. I hope you enjoy it. Stick with me. Uh, maybe you'll learn something. I'm going to learn a whole lot because I'm going to be in a hurry. Okay. So first thing I got to do is uh, I start measuring my stuff out. Okay. Now I use, I use Martha white flour. Uh, some folks use different stuff. I specifically like Martha White. Uh, I've been using Martha White flour. My mama used Martha White flour. My wife uses Martha White flour. And so, guess what? I'm supposing it's pretty good stuff. I've made biscuits with it. I make all sorts of stuff. So, anyway, we start off. We start off with two cups. There's one. Number two. All right. Butter is over here in the freezer. So gonna... The best way to integrate your butter. Okay, is to freeze it first. That way, you turn back around and you grate that butter into your directly in. Okay, the recipe calls two thirds of a cup of butter. Now, two thirds of a cup equal one and a third stick of butter. Okay, so but remember what I told you. Best way to do this is to grate it into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the first part of it. Then I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to grate the rest of it right quick so you don't, you don't care nothing about sitting there watching me grate no butter. But what I'm going to do is show you what I'm talking about. I'm actually going to grate this butter right in. See it? There it goes. Now I'm going to show you why. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera over here in just a second. I'm going to grate this part of it and I'm going to let you see what it looks like. Then I'm going to cut the camera off. Okay, let me bring my camera over here. As you can see, right there. All right, there's my butter all grated up. All right, so we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I got all my butter uh, shredded down into my flour. Get you a good view of it there. That's all the butter. Now I'm fixing to have to cut that in with my pastry cutter, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, right now, what I'm doing here, uh, first of all, I'm getting flour everywhere in it. First thing I'm doing is getting my butter cut into my flour. Now, folks, you'll see I'm working kind of fast because I don't want my butter melts on me, okay? Because if it starts melting on me, then I gotta go put it back in the refrigerator, let it get cold again after I get it all mixed up. But meanwhile, I want to put this all together, work it really good until it comes about the consistency of sand. Okay, that's what, that's what you're working on here. And that's a handy gadget right there, let me tell you. Otherwise, you stand here with a fork trying to do this. Just about got it where I want it. Those of you who watch me cook quite often, uh, I'm normally a pair of coveralls or blue jeans and shirt, but being that I had surgery on my leg, I can't put, I can't put my britches back on over my dressing they got on it. And uh, I still got about six more days before I get the all the stitches. Over here, I've got some really cold water. I want to put about a teaspoon of water in here at a time. All right, I'll be back to you in a minute as soon as I get this where I need it. Okay, as you can, you can see right here, I've got my dough out of my pan, out of my thing. I put, I ended up with this particular flour. I guess it's a little bit drier. I ended up with about 10 tablespoons of water before I got it where I needed it. And now I'm going to need it for, oh, probably five to 10 minutes. Uh, what I want to make sure of is that I incorporate all of this flour back into it. Okay, so you're going to take, 
Okay, and it's not like biscuit dough. Biscuit dough would be much softer than this, uh, moister than this, okay? And we're making enough here for two because I want to put one on top, one on the bottom. Okay, so what I want to do here, and sprinkle me some more flour. It's done, took up all the flour I had a while ago. Put me just a little bit more down in here. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to knead that over. All right, now it's getting pretty good right there. Okay? So what I want to do is, is, is I want to make sure when I squeeze it that I don't get any soft spots in it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. All right. Okay, that's about where I want it, right there. We're going to make, okay, take that right there. And then I'm going to cut that in half. Right about there. Okay, now put that one back over here. Let's spread some more flour here. Okay. We'll make sure that that is well rounded. Now what I want to do right now is I want to get it rounded. I'm going to stick it back in my refrigerator, let it get cold again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is building our filling to go in it. I'm going to use uh, some onion. I'm going to use onion flakes instead of chopping up onion, okay? Main reason is my wife doesn't like a whole lot of onion. We know that. So it's, I'm not going to chop up a whole bunch of onion. But I'm going to put onion flakes in it. And I'm going to put some onion powder, okay? She likes that. Uh, I'm going to use a can of carrots already cut up, up in the cupboard. I'm going to put six cloves of garlic, which I'm going to use already minced garlic so that's what we're gonna do there and i'm gonna put some chicken broth and some heavy cream with your chicken broth i'm gonna be putting a few things uh some corn i'm gonna put canned corn we'll put sweet peas carrots okay i got all my veggies in you see those i've got one can of mixed vegetables one can of corn and one can of carrots okay now it's calling for oh uh, six cloves of garlic i'm using this minced garlic one two there's number three. Now, a half a teaspoon of that minced garlic equals about a clove. So it took me three spoonfuls. Okay, the recipe also called for about three quarters of a cup of whipping cream, which is about what I had left in this one. And so I've already put it in there. Now, I've added one can of cream of mushroom soup. It's gonna add a little bit more texture to it. Okay, I've got all my ingredients in here uh, that, it calls for, that it calls for on the recipe. I've got my mushroom soup. I've got a half a cup of flour. Uh, I got my creamer, my cream. I've got my veggies. Now, I'm gonna put one egg. Okay, we put the one egg. Boop. Take shell out. Okay, and then I'm gonna start putting my chicken in it. Now, folks, this is some really good chicken. This was actually chicken that I cooked the other night on my Big Easy. Buddy, let me tell you something. That's some good chicken. Turned out really good. What I'm going to do here is I'm just run it through my food processor, make it a little quicker. My chunks right where I deboned the chicken is quite a bit. So I'm going to just run it through my food processor and I'll be right back. Okay. While y'all weren't looking, I chopped up my chicken. Okay. And it's not really, really fine, but it is nicely done. Okay. And I put four cups. Once it was chopped, four cups. Okay. Of chopped up chicken. I put one teaspoon of thyme and I put one teaspoon of curry powder. We're gonna mix this all up. Remember we have, so we might have that just a little bit of water, which that's okay. We still got water left over sitting right here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pour a little bit of that water without the ice. There we go. Because what I want is a soup. Just a little bit of a soup. Okay. That's perfect. That was about a quarter cup of water. Turn this down here so you can see what I'm doing. As you can see, that's about the consistency that I want. Maybe once it starts cooking, it's going to start thinning out. Now, the next thing I got to do is I got a line pan, which I moved up to a larger pan, by the way. So I'm going to set this over here out of the way. Let's sit for a little bit. Okay. Because now I've got my dough out and I'll be right back. Okay, 
Went and got my dough back out. All right, I'm gonna start working it until I can fit it in the bottom of that pan. Okay, when I get through rolling it, I've already, see, I've lined my, my pan. I did not have any parchment paper, so I ended up having to go aluminum foil. Same thing, same good, works just as well. And then I sprayed this so my, my, my crust won't stick quite so badly. Now I'm gonna take my crust, the bottom crust now, this is the bottom. I'm gonna lay it down in here. My oven is on. Now I'm gonna lay my crust down, <clears throat> down in here, like so. All right, now, the next thing I want to do is put my chicken mix down in there. All right, okay. Sorry about that. Y'all can see I got it all in there. I'm gonna throw that over my sink. Okay, now, I'm gonna spread this out. Now, my, 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 my crust does not come all the way up, okay? It's not, it doesn't need to because we're fixing to put one on top of it that's going to help. So, now, we're going to set that right here. All right. Gonna level it off a little bit. Okay, we're going to start on the second one. I just got it out of the freezer. I needed it just a little more with my hands to kind of break it up a little. All right, you can see what I'm doing. It's, it's stiff. But that's the way pie crust should be. You want it heavier than biscuit dough because you, it has it has got to withstand some of the juices that biscuit don't have to do. And then it also has to be flaky. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep on going until I get this roll back out for you and I'll be right back. It takes a little bit of work to get that dough laid out like you want it. Okay, now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to roll this around my pen like so. Ah. And I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to get my other side of my pan. All right. And we're going to, oh, look at it. This is unrolled for me, ain't it? Okay. Lay that right there. All right. So we're going to lay that right on the top. Like so. Pull it this way a little bit. All right. All right. Then we're going to tuck it in a little. Okay. Like so. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. All right. Now my dough broke a while ago. So now I'm going to take that piece. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to take a little piece of it. And put it right there. All right. Now. Uh oh, there's another spot right over there. Put that right there. Now the reason we want to cover that as much as we can is because when it starts steaming in that oven, that we want it to cook. Now, everything's done, so all we're really wanting to do is give it about, and we were cooking at 425 degrees, which I've already heated the heated the stove up to that. Let me turn you around this way. All right, I've already put the oven is preheated; it's ready to go. And uh, so we're fixing to, oh, okay, I'm back up there. Okay, all right, so the, pre the oven is preheated 425 degrees. It's been on for a while. In fact, it was on when we started. So now, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slide it in, I'm gonna drop it down to 350, and I'm gonna let it cook probably for about, about 30 minutes or so until it starts browning on top, okay? I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we got it in the oven. I dropped the temperature down to 350, so it's gonna be at 425 for a few minutes. And it'll drop down as it's going, when it's gonna cook. Uh, we're gonna give it about 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and check it, okay? I'm gonna set my timer, and y'all ain't gotta sit around. I'm gonna be back, check on it, in about 20 minutes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, and I'm fixing to pull it out and take a look at it. And uh, the top crust is not done. Top crust is still white, so I'm going to let I turn the heat back up to 425. We're going to let it go for about another 15 minutes, and I'm going to come back and check it again. Okay, after that last 15 minute, oh, this is what it looks like.
Okay, folks, like I told you, we was waiting for my wife to get here. Well, guess what? She made it. And uh, I think she's hungry. So anyway, I'm going to take a look at this, and I'm going to show you as we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn this thing around. Okay, here it is. We got we have got chicken pot pie. That's homemade. Come on, let's get, get your spoon. Let's get a dose of it out of him. She's fixing to cut it. How's it look? Good. How's it smell? It smells good. I didn't get the bottom of it. And here comes my daughter. Whoop, there she goes. No, oh, I was going to take a picture of her in here too, but I decided I probably didn't need to since she was walking so fast. But um, but uh, Mama's cutting into the pot pie. You want pot pie? Yeah. And uh, hello there. Say hi. Hi. Okay, that's my daughter. One of them. And uh, if you hear my dog outside, so anyway. Somebody's fixing to take a bite of it just to tell me how to, I'm fixing to take a bite of it. I'll be right back. All right, here I go. Here goes nothing, folks. It's hot for sure. My gosh. Mmm, that's really good. You know what it needs? Hang on, I'll tell you. <clears throat> yep, didn't put enough seasoning in it. Folks, if you like it mild, you'll like this. If you really like it, it's got to have this, okay? Now, I'll just put a little bit on there. We'll be good. We're going to fix this up a salad. We've got all the makings for the salad. Thank you for being with us. I am out of here. Just a quick reminder that if you liked what you saw on these videos, and you'd like to see some more of this and some of the other videos that I've done, be, of course, go back in and check some of them as well. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, share us with your friends. Uh, everything I do is, is, is family friendly. It's all, uh, it's all fun. And, you know, I do some with my grandkids. And you, yeah, you've seen some of them. Anyway, hope you enjoy everything you do see, but hey, y'all come on back to see us again. Make sure you subscribe now. Before ending this video, I want to take a moment and thank all of our heroes. All of our armed forces out there protecting our country and helping to keep it free. To the veterans of this great nation, I say thank you. May God bless you and your families for the sacrifices you made for us. To our military who have passed on, I want to thank your families in remembrance of you and your service. We also want to thank those other heroes out there risking their lives daily, helping to keep us safe and protected. That would be our EMTs, firefighters, and law enforcement. Thank all of you for loaning us your heroes for a time. May God bless and keep you on your life's journey.